Welcome back to Kilted Swine BBQ. I'm your host and pitmaster, Bob Sellers JR. For more information about me, my smoking team, and my smokers, and my adventures therein, please check out kiltedswinebbq.com, or if you're interested in my tales of the weird wild west, check out sellersjr.com. Today we're going to season my latest edition, Old Red, which is an acorn Kamado cooker. Now, as you can see, and what I talked about in my uh, other video where I unboxed her, is that I have two covers. Well, you can only see the one. The inexpensive cover, I got that at Home Depot, and then I'm using the old cover for the gas grill that she replaced to double cover, because welcome to Minnesota. As they say in Game of Thrones, winter is coming. So I am going to unpack her and get the tools for the seasoning ready and I will talk to you in a minute or so. One thing of note as I pull her out, you'll notice that my configuration for the wheels is different than what many would probably have done had they followed the instructions properly. But as the saying goes, it was a happy accident because I prefer to having locking wheel out in front where I can pull it over the side and move it around. So she will have her own little unique configuration. At the moment, I'm going to set up the shelves. Make sure they're secure. Now, one thing also to point out that is important is grill safety. With the wooden deck, you probably want to get a grill mat to have your acorn on so that there are any issues with something dropping off there's less likely to be further issues so what I'm going to do here is open up now there's a thing called burping although she's not hot right now when you open up an acorn cooker you want to do a little bit of a burp so that the fire doesn't flare should you have, have it going. Now, what they suggest doing as part of the seasoning is to take the different grates and take them in the house and wash them to remove any of the detrius, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I may not have said it correctly, but the leftovers from manufacture. So what I'm going to do is take each of these grates in and do that. And I will be back as soon as that's done. Welcome back. If you find you like this video, please select like and I appreciate it if you subscribe and share if you find this useful. Now, when they talk about seasoning, talk about the grates and the grills. If there's anything I have learned about my smokers is you want to season everything. So what I'm going to do is take some canola oil that I got at Costco. Um, you can get them in a two pack. And I'm just going to go through and just liberally spray that around the inside as well as the top. So it gives you a little oil coating to protect and strengthen. You want to kind of want to avoid the seal. And then what I do is I take a rag, kind of just kind of not very hard, just kind of rub it around, dab it if you will. Of course, my assistants aren't happy with that. So what we'll do is we'll next come to this and repeat the process. So what I'm doing, 
So I'm spraying the outside of the inner sleeve. The idea here is to help protect everything that I can. Again, I'm just going to kind of take a little rag here and rub it down. They don't actually mention needing to do this, but every little bit helps, I've found. You want to make sure you get inside all the nooks and crannies. Once you have it set back in, then we're going to do the inside. Not so worried about it having to be wiped off in here because it'll burn off as we go. Now a couple things to consider with this smoker is that you will have a couple different layer of layers of grates. First one obviously is your charcoal is going to stay on. Put that down at the bottom. Now at this point it might be a consideration to decide how you're going to light your grill. Now in my case as you can see, I have two chimneys. If there's anything I've learned about my charcoal smokers, it's good to know the measurements of how much you're putting in versus how much it takes for the cook. So I typically use the smaller one to start the fire, and I use a larger one to measure out the added fuel that I will be putting in for the smoke or the cook. That way I have a consistent way of knowing what I've used, how long it's going to last. And also it's nice to have a little torch. Now this is a turbo blue hand torch, which when activated gives you a nice little flame. I found this at the hardware store. You find several like it. I don't have any affiliations with any of the products I'm going to be talking about today other than owning their product. Now I do have the ceramic heat baffle but I'm not going to use it today for the seasoning. I will use it when I do my next cook and uh, we will go from there. Alright, so we got everything situated here. I moved some boxes around back to give a little bit of a windbreak. And now I'm going to spray down first the bottom of the main grate. You can't hurt it by putting too much oil on it. You want it to coat it and get cooked in when we get the fire going. Now you notice I've taken out the small grill a pro tip that I saw in another video is whenever you take the big grate out, take the little one out first because they have a tendency to fall and possibly break. So it might be good to get into that habit. So now what I'm going to do is take this out and using the big chimney for test purposes to find out how long a fire will actually last in here. I'm going to Dump it around down in there, picking up the extra, and invariably falls down. Now, since you can't see from that angle, what I'm doing is trying to make an area in the middle. I'm going to dump the hot coals in and get everything burning from the small ones. Now, at this point, I'm going to put the grill on and I'm going to light the small one on top of the grill. Rather than damage the grill unnecessarily, I am going to use some fire bricks. Uh, 
underneath. So what I've done here is I filled the small one up with briquettes. Now I like to start the fire with briquettes and then have the lump. Um, you can pick up whatever lump and briquette you like. I go with either Cowboys, B&B, &B, or some of the others, uh, depending on what's on sale most more often than not. Now, with starting, there's a couple options that you have. You can either go with putting a fire starter stick in, which I don't do, or you can use what's called lighter cubes. This one's put out by Weber. There's many manufacturers, and I do not have any connection with these companies, just as a user of the product. The other one, and this one happens to be put up by Cowboy, is I think what they call a, call a um, tumbleweed starter. Now I have more experience with the cubes, so I think I'm gonna use one of those to get this going. So what you wanna do is to carefully pop these out like you would when you have pills from a medical envelope. And then what we're gonna do we're going to put this here. I'm going to take the safety off. Always make sure you turn the safety on when you're not using your torches. And you can see how that has started. I'm going to put this over this. I'm going to put the safety back on and put this away from the fire. Now, the reason I do it like this is I like to be able to see how my coals are getting ready for the fire rather than starting it down below. Also, what I'm going to do while I have this up here, I'll wait until the pour the coals in. I'm going to oil up the additional grate and put that in there while I am... Uh, seasoning it just to get that seasoned in. Another pro tip is when you go to put hot coals in, make sure your bottom vent is closed. And the reason you do that is so that hot ash doesn't come flying out at you. So we will let this cook up here. And I will be back as soon as it's ready. Now, as you can somewhat see here, we already have a little bit of a difference of opinion. And that's primarily, primarily because of where the uh, probes are directly over the fire, whereas the thermometer on the dome is still coming up to temperature. So right now, according to my AJY, the uh, two grills are off by about 20 degrees, possibly, depending upon how, how their placement is in there. Whereas the acorn thermometer is just breaking 100, but it is climbing. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit. I've already choked back the temperature a little bit. So I'm going to open that up a little bit just to get a little more temperature. The thing you want to avoid doing with these is getting a runaway, um, meaning you don't want it to get above the temperature you want to go to. I'm shooting for about 600 degrees. And this is where you got to learn um, to slow it down and let it catch back up. Because once you go past your temperature, it's very hard to get it to cool off in a quick hurry. You'll have to wait a while because it is insulated. Now I can put my hand on top here and it does not feel at all warm. What I'm doing now is just playing around to see how it affects the temperature when I open everything up. 
You can get an attachment for a pit master that I have fan to go in there. I do not have that as of yet. I may or may not get that, uh, depending upon how I find how this works. Um, hopefully I won't need to get it, but we'll see how my starting the fire goes. If I need to learn a little bit more about fire management within the acorn. Um, you can see the fire is starting to go up a little bit. So I have opened up the vents. I tend to trust the AJY um, because I know I've used it on the other smoker and I have just met this thermometer. So as you can see, temperature is starting to climb. What I'm going to do is shut this down just a little bit and I'm going to leave this going about halfway there probably at number two and a half <laughs> one thing I do wish the acorn had was a probe port but given that it's insulated when I ordered my assassin I had to I got a second one on the other side of it for this very reason When you want to switch AJY thermometers, you just delete it from the app and then resync it with the one you want to go to. Now, they, in the manual, they say 400 degrees. I like to get up about 500. Typically, what I understand is you want to go higher than you normally would be cooking at. Don't know how true that is, but I'm going to let this climb up a little bit further. This will give me a good idea of how adjusting these plays into it. I've closed the top to almost a sliver up there. This is hot, so you know, be careful when you're not to grab it with your hands like I just did. You didn't get burned or anything, but you can definitely feel the heat. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to get down to simmering session down there. I'm going to get it to about one, a little bigger than one. Just let it sit there. I think next time when I do this, when I actually go to cook. I'll probably put the lump across the bottom and pour the hot coals on top of the lump rather than in the middle. That may or may not work better. In this cooker, you can see the temperature has come down just a little bit by doing what I did. You probably want to open this up just a little bit. And there you have it. I'm going to let this sit for about an hour and see how things work out back when we're done. So as a bit of an update, we're about less than an hour in and I have the top vent set at 1 and the bottom vent is sent about 2 and according to my AJY, things have settled in about low 500s, whereas the thermometer on the acorn itself is just getting up to 250, which could be explained a couple different ways. It's how I set up the fire. It's higher up in the dome, um, but it's something I'm going to have to keep an eye on. Um, I have seen different videos that have replaced them. I may also end up investing in the uh, Pitmaster fan option for it. 
um, to have that just to make sure I have good draft going through because the pitmaster is smart enough. I have the IQ 110 as well as the 120 and uh, I will consider that as a option for the next purchase for this fine new lady. At any rate, I will update as we wait to see how long the fire goes for what I put in there. So a little over two hours in, you can see that uh, we're still going strong. And the original load in there has been holding anywhere from the 550 to 540 on the two temperatures there. The only thing is I'm finding is on the thermometer here, it's not that far. It's pretty accurate. I think it shows. I zoom in here and still have the light. It shows like it's centered in there, so you can see how they equalize as you're going. So I'm kind of pretty happy with this. I have not done an actual smoke test, so I don't have any smoke coming out, but that'll be in a future video where I'll do a little bit of smoke talk and talk about how you can get uh, smoke out of your smoker or grill for that matter. So we're going to keep this going and then I will be back to tell you what I see as a taper off when the temperature starts to drop. Well here we are almost five hours in and it stayed at 550, 540 once it got there after about an hour for about four hours, a little over four, it stayed at 550 and started dropping off ever so slowly. So what I'm doing now is I just opened up all the vents. I had at notch one on top, I believe it was stayed the same as what I had it set down below, but now I've opened it up all the way just to, as a practice thing, as when I was done with the smoke, to burn off and see if I can burn off all the ash. As you can see, the temperature is kind of fluctuating. So I'm refeeding it, letting it burn up the rest of the ash and uh, more to come. All right, we finally broke the 400 mark. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at the inside to see how much ash or charcoal we have left. Now following proper protocol, protocols, we're gonna burp. You can see that we still have quite a bit of ash down or charcoal down there. It's fighting to keep warm. I'm just gonna keep let it keep going. And uh, now that I've opened it, see how it recoups or doesn't. See how the, uh, the temperatures vary from the dome, which was usually lower, to the grill temp. And we only going to keep going. It's about 32 degrees outside here, so it's a good test to see how this struggles to keep going. More to follow. Well, it's about an, it's about an hour after the last update. As you can see, the temperature is, was holding about below 300s. We're supposed to get some heavy winds, and I didn't want to leave the ash can or ash base open in the event that things started swirling. So I've closed everything down, and I will empty out the ash in the morning and update then. Um, but I am thoroughly impressed with what I effectually may start calling the hot zone of Old Red. So I will have a short add-on tomorrow morning when I go to empty out the ash. Good morning and welcome back. It's the morning after the uh, seasoning. As I talked about last night, I closed up all the vents and uh, you can hear my cook's assistant's 
discussing who's a better assistant over there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to empty out the ash. Now I don't like leaving ash in my smokers simply because you don't know what kind of buildup you're going to have from that. So what I'm going to do here is take off the grate down below. to empty out ash into an ash bucket. give you an idea how much ash I ended up with from last night. You can see I burned most of it down. That is my goal when I'm setting up my smokers is to get an idea of how much ash will be left. Now when I take this out I'm going to sweep off any excess. A lot of people say that their cross beams rust out. I think by taking proper care of them, I don't mean right away, but over time, as my guess would be that it has to do with the charcoal. So what you want to do carefully Let's lower this down and empty the ash out now I'm not doing this because I'm a neat neck but I like to keep Any ash build up or tar build up to a minimum. Doing this hot might be better than cold, but it works either way. You want to make sure you latch these. Put this back in. 
minus the leaf. And voila. I took a moment there to unpack another addition. I did go out and purchase the Acorn Ceramic Heat Shield that sits nicely in the slots designed for it. Although I did not have that in with the test burn or the seasoning I should say. I will use that going forward when I smoke or my or I grill. Now proper storage would be that you keep everything inside, which I plan to do. Now I have a couple of, I'll find that later, I'm going to keep the probes and the tool inside the cooker for ease of access. And when I put it away, it will be easy enough. Here it is. To get them set up. And there you go. Old Red has been seasoned. Now, things I learned is I will start with a much smaller startup fire if I'm smoking but grilling it turned up nice where it got up to 500 550 degrees and held it there um, I will make a smaller uh, source fire that I put the starter into but all in all I'm very happy with it it uh, held its temperature and for an insulated grill it's worth every penny I paid for it so uh, there you go, and uh, I will be doing some more cooks on this, both smoking and grilling. And if you like this video, found it useful, got some amusement, laughed a bit, um, please hit subscribe and or like and uh, share it if you'd like. But um, yeah, if you're looking for a good grill smoker combination, I can't recommend this smoker enough. It is the better one that I've looked at compared to the thin metal gas and it sounded like I was doing a negative there but I can recommend this <laughs> I can't say enough good good stuff about it um, I'm really impressed and uh, along with my Black Betty Assassin it makes a good combo uh, for insulated and cooking and smoking in the winter so anyway again subscribe like share and have a great day and I'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.